So I snagged this up a couple days ago in the dead of night. Didn't get back home till you know about one o'clock in the morning. We'll go over that later. What we're gonna work on today is my other love. Its engine's pretty much clapped out. Has no compression on two cylinders. It'll run, but it's been sitting here a while, so got air up the front tire. I'm gonna get it running so I can pull into the garage, see what's what, do a compression test, leak down, see if we can determine course of action for getting this one fixed. gas float. That floats down. The needle must be stuck. Flip the key on and see if gas runs out. It's just not moving any gas. I probably do need to take that off. Definitely appears to be pushing it up and down. I just don't think I'm getting gas. Whoops. Still not getting any priming. Try something else. We're gonna blow air into the return line, see what that does. Oh, it's still not priming it. There we go. Oh, shit. So she's running. Yeah, you can really tell she's sick. We're gonna have to, but she'll have enough power for me to basically redline it and we'll get her up in the garage and uh, we'll first do a compression test. I'll show you guys which cylinders are down. I've had the head off to replace the head gasket before and there was a big ring ridge, so I know the cylinders are blown. This thing before would always start one pump. Keep in mind, she's only running on two cylinders. And even those two cylinders aren't very strong. Let's see if we can get this up in the garage with two cylinders. Wow. I'm having to give her full throttle, full RPM. She's not very powerful with four cylinders. It really has no power. And two. Oh. Oh, she's put put putting up there. Oh, I think we're gonna make it, boys. up front if I'm eventually going to pull the engine, but yeah. She ain't healthy. I'll show you guys some blow by here. But let's, uh, target. It's got a pretty good stream of air. Send it all the way. A little smoky. This blue love is my first love. It's kind of special in that it's been it was four wheel drive converted, and it was a it was a dealer option. It was a deal they had going on. They'd take these 
you know, these two-wheel drive loves, because this is a 1976. I don't think they had factory four-wheel drive loves until, was it 79 or 78? I'm not sure. Four-wheel drive love didn't exist at the time this was built. Supposedly, this was the demo model for the conversion process. I'll post that out up here if I can find it. And you can see, in, if you look at that photo, the truck was white. Well, this truck was white before, and uh, it had a little special thing on the bumper, but the previous owner said he sold that before I got it. Still got the roll bar. I added the lights. The rear axle, still the stock love axle. It's been flipped to be on the bottom side of the springs. I adjusted the pinion angle there, so that's how they get the lift in the back. And then the front axle, the front axle is off of a CJ5 Jeep. I had to get this drive shaft made because They'd made their own drive shaft. I think this was kind of a test model because the drive shaft that was on it was shoddy. Um, this thing was just cut out. I actually welded in that plate to help. Oh, transfer case. And I guess that's out of a CJ5 as well. And then you got, I got my little stubby drive shaft that connects the stock love transmission to the transfer case. Four high, four low, two wheel drive. The stock love or axle, just a tiny. Tiny guy. I've thought about engine swaps with this. I've considered different things. One problem, pretty major problem, is axle to engine clearance. And I don't want I don't want to lift this thing, make it way up in the air. I kind of like exactly where it's at. So I think I'm just gonna keep with the, that turd stock engine. Look at that clearance. I put those bump stops on, but you can see before it even I think it hit that pan. I ended up modifying this housing to use shocks. Uh, that's, that's just flapping in the breeze, isn't it? Freaking junk. Use a stock shock off of a Ranchero. Back of a Ranchero. Look at these aren't even that old in the rubbers. They just don't make shit worth it. I like just driving these things. I don't, you know, making something perfect. I just like getting them going and driving. But man, if this thing had 150 horsepower or 200 instead of 80, it'd just be, it'd be a lot more enjoyable to go down the highway and stuff. It'll go 55. The wind's at your back. You can do... 65 that the wind's at your back even 70 but she's wrapping pretty tight this thing when i got it it was clapped out like i already showed you the drive shaft underneath was completely shot new brake cylinder new clutch cylinder new slave cylinder on the transmission I did electric fan conversion you know try to free up some horsepower this is a new alternator fuse box the stock fuse box had to be eliminated and i just i did it the cheap one because like I said I, I like to get them going. I don't. I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of money on a rusted out love. I just want to get it on the road and drive the damn thing. So you can see my coating lights, ignit, ignition. If they aren't marked, they aren't that important. Custom lid on that because it was rotten and cracked. Your stuck radiator is still good. I did this bed liner job, and this time I used the Raptor stuff. And I can't really blame the Raptor. I think it was. I didn't do adequate surface prep because I know surface prep is the most important step, but it's really the most sucky step too. So I got kind of lazy and I just sprayed that stuff with rust conversion paint and it didn't work very well. I can't blame the Raptor liner. I need to just sandblast this whole bed, but my sandblaster is kind of small and I don't have a big enough compressor to run it. Put this old retired race fuel cell in here. Got a clear filter, of course, so you can see if your fuel's flowing. I just used that earlier today. Put these lights on. Oops. Needs a little love. I got these LEDs. These are pretty sweet. They were kind of a pain in the ass to fit. See, so yeah, they kind of cut up the housing because they don't fit. But man, they're awesome. I can see very good in the dark in this thing. I put these mirrors on. They had some janky ass. I don't know what mirrors on, which these aren't great, but they can see. The guy before me had kind of beat up the floorboard so the stock seat didn't fit in there anymore because he fit some bench seats out of some car. They were fucked up and all worn out too. So I got these seats off of some guy on the internet. They were out of a car, but I ended up modifying the floorboard to make them sit right. And I welded in the holes that were in the floorboard with sheet metal and put this mat in here. Got this thing. This is a nice plastic dash cover because the dash was completely wiped out because the dashes are fucked up in every love. I made this. This dash comes with these open because there's supposed to be a vent. Or there is a vent there, but there's supposed to be louvers. So I made that out of screen door screen. And, uh, 
out of a refrigerator. This thing got pretty mint. Ow. That's pretty much it. I drove the shit out of it until the it was weak on the back two, I think it is, and it just got weaker and weaker until they wouldn't even fire. We'll do a compression test on this. I think I found the starter solenoid wire. Connections are bad enough at new vehicles, but something from 1976. And, oh, I'm gonna rig me up a starter switch so we can do this compression test easier. This will be the one that goes to the starter solenoid. Yep, that wasn't a good crimp. All right, some solder on it. I need it. I'm using the wrong size, I think. Freaking solder. Pull test. Okay, we're good now. All right. Finally. Might as well go ahead and... Oh. Of course. Refilled and ready to go. Mint. Give the crank o test. See if it works. See, it's the wrong size fade, but... I think I'll just spread it out with a screwdriver a little bit. Make that a little bigger. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, f mint, look at that. <laughs> now I'm pulling spark plug. I like to use one of these locking type. See how it just slips on off. Locking type extensions, because it's got the rubber sleeve in there, so when you got the spark plug stuck to it, it's nice not losing your socket every time you pull on it. Wow. Wow. Hey, you got that one a little tight, boys. Look at the spark plug on that. It's not even firing. It's just, just wet with gas. But I did. These spark plugs aren't that old. And look, look how f that one is. Basic compression tester kit comes with the. Main compression tester, you've got various fittings, most of which I've never used. Whichever one of these adapters matches the your spark plug. That looks to be it. So you take your appropriate adapter. Just thread it in with your hand. Just snug. I mean, don't, don't get, no reason to get carried away. It's got no ring on it. And you take your compression tester. Clip it on. I'm gonna grab my crankomatic. And we'll pretty much turn over the engine, kind of, until we see the gauge not jumping very much. It's a front hole. You like to record your values. I'm gonna do that really quick. Record your value. Release your pressure. Go on to the next hole. Okay. You do this to determine the health of the engine. I already know this engine is very unhealthy, so and you'll see on these back holes here. One thing you want to be careful to do, mine was clean, but if yours was dirty, uh, spray those holes out before you remove your spark plugs. That keeps you from, sometimes you get build up there, and then when you take spark plugs out, you end up knocking crap down in your cylinder. Number three. Is that really all it's doing? What? That seems, the way it's blowing out this hole, it's building compression, blowing it out this hole. I think I got a problem with my head, it looks like. It shouldn't be blowing across like that. You hear it coming, you hear it coming through that hole big time? That's pretty weird. I don't feel like those, that's, Pretty freaking weird. Basically making no compression on those back two holes. These two holes are down and they're down about the same. So I don't think it's all rings. I definitely think the rings are clapped out. Maybe I just take off the head. I've had the head off before. It's not even a big deal. This engine is screwed up. The number one cylinder had about 12% leak by, which is on the verge of needing rebuilt. And the number two hole off the charts, but still would make compression. And number three and four, no compression, no, basically like an open line. The air's just passing straight through, so there's something really screwed up. I started thinking about the way it went. I'm starting to think I have a blown head gasket in between the three and four cylinder, and that's what caused them to... Regardless, 
the engine's worn clear out. So it still needs to come out. I could replace the head gasket on it and keep on sending it. Now it's going to, it still burns a shitload of oil and is underpowered. Wouldn't be right, but at least I'd be able to drive it.